Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Rinks, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today I want to talk about dream matches if AEW and WWE faced off against each other in a pay-per-view. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't see this happening in anytime soon or ever for that matter. But it's good to dream about like if these two companies were to face off against each other and they use a pay-per-view to promote both of their programs. The way I'm going to do this is... I'm going to show each wrestler against each other, what makes them good against each other, their personalities going against each other, and their wrestling skill. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it. In our first match of the pay-per-view, we have Velveteen Dream facing off against Sammy Guevara. To be honest, I really do see these two facing off against each other. The tagline of the match would be Spanish God versus Wrestling God. These two are very arrogant in their personalities that these two want to decide who is the better wrestler or who is the better god if you will calling each other false god and also not only is the gimmicks really good against each other they have really good wrestling abilities as well and there could be some different spots of the match where Sammy Guevara is vlogging in the ring and Velveteen takes his camera Sammy Guevara slaps him in the face on top of the turnbuckle and also some really good spots as well where Sammy Guevara does a backflip and then just going back and forth with each other. It's not only a good gimmick match where the personalities would go well together, but also the wrestling would be good and sound as well. Our next matchup on the card would be Dustin Rhodes The Natural facing off against Roman Reigns The Big Dog. To be honest with you, I was trying to find somebody for Dustin Rhodes to face off against and I realized that Roman Reigns as a big part of WWE and I wanted him to face off against someone so I figured these two would be a good matchup. There's not really any gimmick involved, it's just simply a wrestling match of AEW versus WWE and I could see these two actually putting on a good match as well, a good solid word, just something laid back where a fan could enjoy. Next on the card we have Sadie Gibbs facing off against Becky Lynch, the man. I believe these two would put on a good match and it would be a good starting point of women's matches on this card and to be honest there's a lot of women's matches on this card and a lot of the competitors in these matches could be interchangeable with any of the competitors but I felt like these two belonged with each other that they can put on a good solid grounded wrestling match and a good starting point of the pay-per-view as well. Sadie Gibbs I'm going to be honest I don't haven't seen much of her to be honest I haven't seen much of Sadie Gibbs because I've only been introduced to her to AEW as with Becky Lynch. I've been following her since her NXT days. But I really do believe that Sadie Gibbs is just as good of a wrestler as Becky Lynch. I have seen a lot of clips of her and I started watching her ever since her debut. Not too much gimmick into this match as well because I can see Becky Lynch still being the man, being tough. But then she has a competitor who is just as tough as her. Our first tag team match of the card will be the Jurassic Express facing off against the New Day. And holy crap, I can actually see this being a good match, not only grounded with wrestling ability, but also just a fun match and be some comedic parts to the match as well. You can also individually place these wrestlers against each other like Marco Sun facing off against Xavier Woods, Luchasaurus facing off against Big E, and Jungle Boy Jack Perry facing off against Kofi Kingston. The match itself would be good, especially with Jungle Boy and Kofi Kingston going off against each other for the majority of the match. Then you have a lot of parts where maybe the New Day is trying to feed pancakes to them, but Luchasaurus is just throwing them away and then they like run away from him because Luchasaurus is a big guy. Then you have the stare down with Big E and Luchasaurus in the ring and then that would pop the crowd too just to see how those two would go against each other. And maybe there's a part where Marco's son is doing his Fortnite dance and then the New Day actually join him too. And overall, like, I would actually be happy at the end of the match. If the match is good and there are some good parts in it, I think it would be worth watching no matter who won the match. Next up on our tag team action, we have Santana and Ortiz facing off against the Usos in a street fight match. Both of these teams are very good in their respective companies, and I feel like their chemistry against each other would be very good, especially for a pay-per-view quality match. 
we can start off with some good uh, solid wrestling at the beginning but then afterward then introduce some street fight into it where they go backstage they start beating each other up ortiz is scratching their backs hitting them with that sock which i don't even know what's in the sock to be honest with you and then we get some dives here and there from the back as well and just it would be just a slobber knocker quoting jr here it would just be back and forth with each other like these two are not letting up they're trying to prove who's the toughest between the two our next match on the card and oh god we have the miz facing off against mjf to be honest with you this is pure gimmick like i know these two can put on a show if they wanted to but just the interaction between these two if you let miz be his heel self facing off against mjf which in my opinion is the better mic worker I can see these two interacting with each other like I don't know they end up maybe liking each other at first and then they just ended off where they just hate each other and they're just gonna beat the crap out of each other. So nothing really special with the match just purely gimmick related. And to be honest I am kind of curious about what MJF would say about The Miz because MJF is really good in the mic and I know Miz can do some good mic work if you let him off the leech a bit. Our next women's match on our card is going to be Chris Statlander going up against Lacey Evans. This one's pretty simple and straightforward. Basically, Chris Statlander meets Lacey Evans in the back and she's trying to poke her nose and Lacey Evans is like, don't touch me, you nasty. And then this prompts Lacey Evans on maybe proving herself in the storyline, saying that she's the lady of wrestling rather than lady of WWE or NXT in her past matches. So this time she's trying to prove herself and Chris Statlander just wants to wrestle her. So as simple as that, go straight forward with it. And I really do think these two can put on a really good match given enough time. The next women's match we have on the card is Sasha Banks going up against B. Priestley. With these two I can see each other not liking each other. They actually hate each other in the storyline. I can see B. Priestley attacking her from behind and that's what prompts the storyline and it could go on for like maybe half a year. And then that prompts for them to have a series of matches where one is trying to best the other and they just hate each other. They're just trying to go after each other. The next match we have on the card is Sean Spears, the chairman, going off against Randy Orton, the Viper. I would imagine where Sean Spears attacks Randy Orton with a chair and it causes Randy Orton comes back and he attacks him and then the two face off against each other for a good bit. And then maybe be a chair match, be their ending storyline match. And then Randy Orton could play mind games with him along with Sean Spears. They just go back and forth with each other. And I don't know. I could. I don't know why WWE didn't go with Sean Spears. Well, he was Ty Dillinger at the time. Make him a heel because I think that would put kind of a fresh take onto him. Because seeing him now in AEW, I do like what they're going with him. I want to see him in a major storyline. But with this pay-per-view match, I can very well see him go well with Randy Orton. The next match on the card would be Shima facing off against Shinsuke Nakamura. And to be honest, this is one of my favorite matches that I made onto this card. Shima, regrettably, I know he's wrestled for 22 years. I've only found out about him through AEW and I wish I discovered the guy sooner because he's an amazing wrestler. And I believe pairing him with Shinsuke Nakamura would give more insight to him and also give more freshness to Sensuke Nakamura who in my opinion has been suffering dearly in WWE. Not including his NXT days which were awesome but in the main roster Nakamura hasn't really found his ground and I do blame booking on that but putting him against Shima would be a good fast paced match like I can see these two giving a lot of kicks to each other and very stiff work with each other. Oh boy here comes a controversial topic. Please guys don't hate me for this, this is just my opinion. The next tag team action we have on the card is SCU going off against The Revival. Everyone talks about the Young Bucks and The Revival facing off against each other and I don't, I don't doubt that. I, don't, I think those two teams can put on a good match but personally I think SCU is a better fit for The Revival based on wrestling ability. I can see the Bucks facing off against another tag team, maybe the Street Profits or the Usos, which personally I actually would have put the Usos and Young Bucks against each other because they're the best in their respective tag teams. The Revival is one of the best tag teams too, but I see them going well against each other with SCU. 
And then this is going to be pure wrestling. Like, there's no gimmicks, just the two facing off against each other of who's the best tag team in their company. Like, the companies choose the best tag team to represent the company and the epic clash of tag teams of who is the best. And no gimmicks, no funny things in the matter, just pure wrestling for this match. The next women's match we have is Awesome Kong facing off against Amber Moon. There are a lot of women I could feel like can go up against Awesome Kong because WWE's women's roster is just as good. But I feel like Ember Moon would be the perfect fit against her because I think Ember Moon has more fire inside of her and more moxie to her to go up against Awesome Kong. And it's simply put, uh, which one is the fierce warrior? That would be the storyline of who can overcome each other. And I can see Ember Moon taking the fight to her because Awesome Kong is hard to take down, but it would be a good wrestling match as well. Holy crap, I've been waiting for this match. The next match on the card is Ricochet facing off against Darby Allen. Oh boy, where to start with this match? Um, yeah, this is going to be pure wrestling on this one because I'm a fan of both of these wrestlers. This one was hard to find because you could literally put Ricochet and Darby Allen with anyone in the roster of the opposite company. I wanted to go with like, I hate the whole superhero gimmick with Ricochet. It would have been done right if they wouldn't just beaten it to the ground, but I can see Ricochet being the lighter part and then Darby Allen being a dark side, like kind of an anti-hero. And then I wouldn't say it's too much comic booky, but just a hero facing off against a, not a villain, but an anti-hero. Just ideals wouldn't click with each other of who's the better who is the better performer because these two are unbelievable in the ring like they're very fast paced so that's why i think these two would definitely go well with each other it would be very fast paced and then get some good solid work in there too and just the spots would be crazy and i can see ricochet pushing himself maybe going a bit hardcore because darby allen can take some pain next matchup we have is hangman adam page facing off against aj styles I can really see a good match between these two. They're very similar with each other with personality and at the same time very different. This would be just an ordinary match, nothing really over the top, just simple fact that these two are trying to one-up each other or who is the better one of the two. And I really don't see the OC involving in this. This is just going to be strictly between AJ Styles and Adam Page and where they can really turn things up as you can say doing some cowboy shit. Oh boy, <laughs> this might be a good one. The next match we have is Le Champion, Chris Jericho going up against Seth Rollins. I'm very aware that they have faced each other in WWE, but this is AEW Chris Jericho, which in my opinion has been the better gimmick of his entire career than anything he's done in WWE, which is still good. I'm not downplaying that. And going off against a heelish Seth Rollins would be good for him as well because Chris Jericho, I know he's not as young as he used to be, but he is still really good in the ring. So pairing him off with Seth Rollins, who is very good in the ring, even though he's a bit controversial with his Twitter, but I can see these two interacting with each other on their current personas right now. That these two can pretty much talk trash to each other and also at the same time put on a good match as well. I never thought I wanted to see this match. The next match we have on our card is Pac facing off against Buddy Murphy. Pac, as you know, was Neville in NXT or in WWE, and he was a good wrestler, and then of course he left WWE due to circumstances, so now he's part of AEW, but pairing him against someone in WWE, how about someone that is just as good as him, maybe the best well-kept secret in WWE, and to me, that's Buddy Murphy. We're starting to see a lot more of Buddy Murphy and I hope they uh, push him because he really does deserve to be like one of the top guys. He's a really good wrestler. Now the match itself, I can see these two trying to one up each other. Now this one, I can see an Iron Man match making an hour long or maybe 30 minutes at best. And then these two just put on a really good show like just back and forth with each other, a lot of kicks, a lot of stiff kicks, a lot of holds with each other, 
and I think this could be the match of the night. Like, I really could see that because these two are two phenomenal wrestlers and they deserve a lot of praise for it. The next match we have is John Moxley going up against Samoa Joe in a Hell in a Cell match. I'm well aware that these two have also faced each other in WWE, but with Moxley's new persona and boy is he a badass in AEW, I think this persona fits him much better. And then finding an opponent for him, I think Samoa Joe deserves that spot because he needs to be pushed and I think they're pushing him now by the time of this recording. I think they are pushing him. But to pair him with Moxley in a because these two are badasses by their own right and they're very tough competitors. So put them in a match where they're locked in with each other and there's no escaping. You're stuck with each other. You might as well beat the crap out of each other. And a Hell in a Cell match would be perfect for both of them. The next and final tag team match of the night would be the best friends going off against DIY Reunited. Honestly, this could be a bit of a storyline where the best friends are just facing off against them while Johnny Gangaro and Tommaso Ciampa where they're still hesitant with each other because they still can't really forgive each other for Tommaso Ciampa did to Gangaro. Those two can have animosity against each other while the best friends, they're very united. I mean, have you seen them wrestle with each other? They're very in sync. But eventually they start trusting each other and I can see the match picking up from there where DIY just finally just put their differences to the side and they become a tag team again and that's where the match really starts and then the match is just back and forth with each other. It could be the match of the night and it could be a show stealer as well because all four are really good competitors and both are really good tag teams as well. This was last minute as I'm recording this. This was literally last minute I just thought about this. Orange Cassidy going up against Aleister Black. They're both the very silent type. And yes, I'm going off of NXT Aleister Black, not him in the main roster where he's begging for people to knock on the door where they make him talk. No, like silent Aleister Black. He is very annoyed by Orange Cassidy. Like he's kind of curious about him, but he's annoyed by him that he just pops up eventually. So he wants to test him. And the two actually proceed to have a really good match. And yes, I'm aware about Orange Cassidy hasn't really done anything in AEW, but if you've seen him in other promotions, boy, the guy can wrestle. Holy crap. I mean, it takes a lot to put your hands in your pocket and to dive outside of the ring and also in the middle of the rope where you have to be as precise as possible. The next women's match we have is going to be Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, facing off against Charlotte. To be honest, I really do see them as kind of the queen of each other's respective company. Not necessarily the best wrestler of each company, but I can see these two button heads with each other of who's the better one of the two because these two are seem to be favored in their respective companies. The next women's match we have is Nyla Rose going up against Rhea Ripley. I discovered Nyla Rose in AEW mostly in the battle royal that she competed in and that's where I fell in love with her because I like her gimmick where she's just a, where she's unstoppable in the ring like I actually can't wait to see her and Kong eventually go at it, and I think a lot of people were favoring that match too and also Rhea Ripley has won me over with her matches recently especially at war games and her championship match and NXT back in December so with these two facing off against each other, it's just basically two powerful women against each other and just who is the strongest one, like who is tougher. And you can either have this as a tables match or maybe like a street fight match. Just you can have any kind of stipulation with this one because this would be a good match just showing who's the tougher between the two. The next match and it's our final women's match of the night. It's Haku Shida facing off against Asuka. These two are my favorite female wrestlers of both companies. And then these two could put on match of the night and just a good solid match overall. Shida, I fell in love with ever since I saw her competing in AEW. I actually kind of want her to have the belt. I want them to build her just a little bit longer, but I think she should get the belt next. And Asuka, she is killing it with her heel persona. 
I liked her in NXT where she was a bit cocky, but now I love that she's a full-on heel and I kind of want her to beat Becky at the time of this recording. These two facing off against each other, I really do think we'll get an astounding match. Like, these two kicking each other, diving with each other, just, this would be a good solid match. Basically, the best female wrestler going up against the best female wrestler in their respective companies. Our second to last match of the night will be Sami Zayn going up against Cody Rhodes. I know a lot of people probably would have put Triple H against Cody Rhodes, but honestly, I think it should be it should be wrestlers who are active most of the time and I know Sami Zayn hasn't wrestled very much actually not at all for argument's sake let's say this match is an undesirable to undeniable match the storyline could be that Cody Rhodes wants to face against somebody in WWE and he doesn't want to face off against anyone that is on top of the food chain of the company he wants to wrestle against someone who feels like they deserve praise. He wants that undesirable to undeniable achievement to them. So he chooses Sami Zayn and much to his dismay, Sami Zayn accepts the match. Maybe the powers that be are not giving him a chance. He is still a heel, but you can still feel his frustration that he wants to be recognized. He wants people to see things the way he does. And then the match itself, I know Sami Zayn is a great wrestler. I loved him in NXT. Possibly my favorite match with him was him facing off against Nakamura. And then of course him versus Cesaro or another favorite of mine. And then I think he would have good chemistry with Cody because Cody can put on a good match as well. And just this would be kind of an emotional match. And I couldn't even tell you who would win. But basically Sami Zayn would go over with the crowd in this match because people are finally seeing him in a different light what he's meant to be he should be a top guy in my opinion before we get to our final match of the video here are some honorable mentions of some other matches that i came up with but i didn't have enough time talking about and also keep in mind just because i chose these wrestlers against each other that doesn't mean that there are other wrestlers i forgot about trust me i would have loved to put finn balor or cesaro or the young bucks I would have loved to put them in my dream matches, but I couldn't really find anyone. So let me know in the comments who which wrestler would have faced each other. And also let me know stipulations and also just and let me know of just other matchups that would have been great. Because to be quite honest with you, a lot of these wrestlers that I name in this video, they are very interchangeable where they can face off against each other. And because that's what it's all about at the very end of it is that we all love wrestling and we like to see a good wrestling match performed. And now to our main event of this pay-per-view card. The final match of the night would be Kenny Omega facing off against Daniel Bryan. And boy, I would love to see this match. I don't know if they faced each other and I'm probably ignorant for this, but yeah, let me know in the comments if they have and if they do, I want to see that match. But nonetheless, I would like to see him at a big stage where they're allowed to showcase their talents. Daniel Bryan is very underrated and now he's getting popularity but I felt like he should have been popular. He should have been in the main card for a long time. And Kenny Omega, sadly, I have just discovered him in AEW and just finding out that he is one of the best wrestlers in the world. Holy crap, his New Japan wrestling matches, wow, they are god tier. Now these two facing off against each other it's just simply who is the best wrestler in their company. And I wouldn't even want a stipulation. I just want this to be a good rounded wrestling match. And just these two can go on for about 30 to possibly 40 minutes. I don't think I would ever get tired of it because these two can just keep going against each other, just going back and forth and back and forth. And that's all the matches I made for this pay-per-view. I had a lot of fun doing this. Wrestling is one of my big passions in my life and I love talking about wrestling. And this is just something fun to do. It's not something to take too seriously about because they will never do anything like this, but it's fun to speculate these kind of things. So let's start wrapping things up. Hit the notification bell to let you know when some more videos would come out. Also like, subscribe, share, and also there will be my handles for both my Twitter and Instagram page to follow me on my day-to-day -day life. Until next time, my owlets, I'll catch you later.